viewers, so glad to have you join us on your incisive business program, Economy Today. I am Elizabeth Ocheme. Our focus today is on the oil and gas sector of the Nigerian economy. It is a known fact that oil is currently the mainstay of the Nigerian economy. However, with the dwindling global oil price, service providers and operators within the sector are putting together structures in place to ensure they get return on investment. And so on our package today, we feature the Group Managing Director, Chief Executive of Nest Oil Limited, NS Azudialu Obedesi, one of the major service providers in the oil and gas sector. Also, we'll bring to you an exclusive interview we had with Tunde Afolabi, the chairman, Army International Petroleum Development Company Limited, one of the outstanding operators in the sector. And also, of course, as the regulator of the sector, we'll feature George Osahan, the Department of Petroleum Resources, DPR. Do enjoy the package. Olympic apple fruit drink made from European apples. Olympic healthy choice. Nest Oil Limited is a member of the Obi Jackson Group, which commenced operation in 1991 to showcase the expertise and competence of Nigerians in the Nigerian oil and gas sector, which was mainly dominated by the international oil companies, IOCs. Nest Oil, as the organization is fondly called, was originally engaged in blending and marketing of petroleum products. However, as a result of his dynamic management and technical competence, identified an opportunity in the oil and gas sector and reinvented itself as an engineering, procurement, construction and commissioning EPCC services company. Ernest Azudialu Obiejezi is the group managing director and chief executive. Nest Oil Limited was formed in 1991 uh, as an oil and gas service company. But actually, um, when we formed the company, we started off as a blending company. But um, within the, after about two years, we, uh, we realized that the blending business or the competition in the blending business is something that we are not quite comfortable with because we see ourselves competing with Texaco and uh, all the big companies. So we started looking into other areas of the oil and gas business. So. But when we looked at these areas, we find out that the oil and gas business has a gap. There's a lot of money that is being made, you know, by this section or these sectors of this sector of the economy, where the oil, the oil production is being sold or the crude is being sold outside Nigeria. But the cost of production of that oil is something that we believe Nigerians were not. Um, participating so we decided to look into that segment of the industry and we found out that most of the works so most of the services has been provided by foreign companies within nigeria so we decided to focus nest oil into that particular segment and we started uh, you know doing presentations started talking to the iocs and then um, by the time you know it, we started uh, getting uh, jobs and services provided for some of these companies. So Nest Oil now kind of created a niche for himself by being one of the first indigenous companies to go into the service uh, business. George Osaho, Director, Department of Petroleum Resources, DPR, which is the regulating body for the oil and gas sector in Nigeria, speaks on the activities of the department. When you want to do business in the oil and gas industry, you need a license or a permit to do it. Of course, you know all the categories of permits you have to take. If you want to sell ordinary kerosene, <coughs> you must take permit from the DPR. If you want to drill for oil, you have an operating company, you must take permit from the DPR. 
That means the DPR must have an idea of what it takes for you to give you a permit, what you need to do, how you need to do it, when you should do it, what your obligations are to government with respect to what you are doing. So because of that, the DPR, apart from the law, which is the guiding principle for everything we do, has some guidelines that are put in place for you to know what to do with respect to each of these operations that you have to go through. So we deal with everybody that's operating, whether you operate as a company into oil and gas activities, or you operate as a service provider. When it also comes to data, data is one of the major areas of our activity. In fact, without data, we are dead, because that is what the country feeds on. You probably won't understand it that way, but the truth also is if anybody wants to do any business anywhere here, you want to know exactly what has been going on. What am I going to do? How am I going to do it? And that means you need data. And we protect the data as much as possible, and that's one of the things where we're trying to structure, so that anybody can go on our website and download data. But it's not going to be free. One other area which everybody has addressed, which I think people are happy with, is the one we call oil and gas industry service permit uh, is the permit you must take for you to operate in the oil and gas industry as a service provider and what we've done is to computerize the system so if you want your permit what you should take like two weeks three weeks one month six months as the case may be it's now 72 hours you apply online you collect your document online it is instructive to note that nestor a proponent of global best practices also have other companies to function efficiently and effectively. These include the Energy Works Technology Limited, EWT, and ISO certified manufacturers of pressure vessels, process plant equipment, as well as oil and gas steel structures fabricator. Also, NESHAC, a company that specializes in the horizontal directional drilling, HDD, technique in pipeline construction. NESHAC, boasts of an experienced crew, two rigs permanently stationed in Nigeria, and the possibility to deploy more rigs and pipe pushers. One of the achievements that Nest Oil um, had to its name is um, one of the major or the biggest pipeline that has been you know, constructed in the, in the oil and gas industry. Nest Oil has built so many kilometers of pipelines for sure. And as, you know, as it stands today, Nest Oil is one of the most successful oil and gas um, services company, you know, in Nigeria. But more recently, you know, over the past two years, Nest Oil is also constructing the biggest pipeline ever built in Nigeria, the OB3 pipeline. That pipeline takes, um, you know, gas, you know, from the, you know, from the, from the delta, you know, up to the north towards uh, Oben. So, you know, for Nest Oil, it's a company that has achieved so much that sometimes it's difficult for people to believe that it's a purely 100% Nigerian company. So, we, you know, we've done so much in terms of um, facility construction, the pipelines, and um, also in um, other areas of the services. Today, Nestor has diversified further into um, dry docking, dredging, you know, and HDD, you know, uh, uh, horizontal uh, directional drilling which is like the new technology for laying uh, pipelines. So there have been other companies that have just sprang up as a result of uh, the services that Nestor was able to provide in the industry. In addition, the Shipside Dry Dock is one of the subsidiary that is able to streamline its docking activities in the bid to meet its objectives for safe working conditions and a variety of services for vessels. When we started, uh, we had a... Um, we had issues with uh, the kind of jobs we were able to, you know, um, accept within the industry. But um, you know, over the time, over the time, we found out that um, the most of the jobs being given to Nigerian companies or what the IOCs were able to provide for us were just little or you know, civil and uh, mechanical jobs. So we decided to refocus, you know, into the pipeline uh, construction industry. So Nest Oil actually now had to focus more into the mechanical uh, you know, uh, segment of the industry and over the years we built capacity in pipeline construction, flow lines, um, you know, construction and um, most of the mechanical works required for oil production. So 
the, the products of Nestle oil today is in the, in, in the pipeline construction in major fabrications. We do major fabrications for most of the IOCs, and uh, we aid the IOCs in, um, you know, in building uh, production facilities. I mean, in short, in short terms, you can say that once the oil comes out of the ground, Nest Oil can take care of uh, the product from that time till uh, it's exported. So we take care of uh, all those uh, facilities and all the services required to get oil, um, you know, into the tankers. With a vision to deliver innovative customer-focused solutions safely, Nest Oil established an aviation department, Nest Ave, to provide safe, reliable, comfortable, and qualitative charter services. The vision of Nest Oil Limited is to be the leading integrated services um, and innovative solutions provider in our chosen markets. Then, for our mission, you know, we deliver integrated services, you know, uh, integrated services and solutions to our customers safely to make sure that also when we deliver some of these services and solutions, we do them under a very safe environment and make sure that also the workers go home safely. Given its deep knowledge and understanding of the operating environment, Nest Oil combines professionalism, modern technology, and human capital to achieve set goals of its valued clients. The oil and gas industry, you know, over the period, you know, within, within which Nigeria was producing oil, has also gone through a kind of transformation because initially the Nigerians were not involved in the production of uh, oil. So the required manpower and the required technology transfer, you know, that would have enabled this production um, services or even the the EMP business to concretize in Nigeria was not there. So within that period here now, there is, there is this gap you know, that exists between what Nigerians were able to do on their own and what the IOCs were able to do on their own. So there's a gap between you know, what is being done in terms of uh, uh, personnel, in terms of a uh, technical transfer, and even in terms of uh, production itself. So the volume of oil that can be produced in, you know, in an economy is a function of further exploration activities, drilling, you know, um, uh, daily production, and uh, also making sure that all the right parameters are all met. So I believe that you know, this gap is as a result of uh, you know, lack of uh, you know, interest in uh, getting the Nigerians involved in the day-to-day -day activities of, uh, you know, of um, oil production. So because of that, that gap exists you know, and, uh, until when such issues like uh, local content laws you know, you know, became so ineffective within the industry that this gap can actually be breached. Operating on the core values of integrity, innovation, teamwork, leadership, excellence. Nest Oil believes the sky is not the limit, but the beginning. Nest Oil actually, you know, is expected to be, you know, one of the first, you know, uh, public quoted companies, you know, in Nigeria. They, you know, the, in the next five years, Nest Oil should be, you know, uh, quoted in Nigerian Stock Exchange and also possibly also in the London Stock Exchange. So we expect Nest Oil to go international also within the next five years. I mean, we should, we should be talking about Nest Oil in Angola, Nest Oil in some of the uh, countries where we have oil and you know, that are already prospecting their oil now. So we believe that, um, for me, Nest Oil uh, should be uh, an international player within the next five years. But more importantly is that uh, Nest Oil will be quoted in Nigerian Stock Exchange. The plan is already on and we know that within the next few years it will be actualized. Ernest. Azudialu Obiejezi's wealth of experience in the oil and gas sector have no doubt positioned him as a sinusoid of all eye, given the number of awards in his kitty. He, however, shares with us some of his challenges. What we've done over the years is also to make sure that we bridge the gap between what the experts have been doing for us and what Nigerians you know, can do. So we've been able to transform completely most of the things that we hire experts to do overseas, you know, to do them in Nigeria. You can see, I mean, Nest Oil um, has grown to be a 100% Nigerian oil and gas company. We don't have experts, I mean, working for us anymore. We just sometimes guess that even when we want to do some special, um, some special, um, you know, type of um, 
jobs. But Nigerians has actually taken over the industry and we are 100% Nigerian company. We build so many capabilities, so many capacity in the in different uh, aspects of uh, our work. Next Oil um, has, um, has uh, its own challenges. The challenges is, you know, is also um, similar to what you have in uh, most of the developing economies. The major challenge also in uh, in Nestor today, so is uh, the ability to, you know, to create the enabling um, or the capable uh, manpower that you know that should sustain the growth in the company. We we'll have the manpower problem, making sure that the people we are training to take over from the expatriate, uh, the, the experts that work in the company, are competent, and also that these Nigerians are also there to continue over the years to to grow. You know within the company so uh, apart from those um, you know personal challenges we have also financial challenges you know that um, Nigeria as a country and the, the Nigerian uh, banking industry is also not so strong enough to support the oil and gas business so the, the, there is problem with the finance there's also a problem of uh, manpower but also more importantly also is uh, the ability to you know, to conquer all the challenges within the communities where we work. There's Olympic apple fruit drink made from European apples. Olympic healthy choice. Omni International Petroleum Development Company Limited is a leading oil and gas organization established over two decades ago with a special focus on exploration and oil production. Driven by the vision to be the company of choice for exploring and producing activities in the oil and gas sector in Nigeria, Amni International Petroleum Development Company Limited constantly deliver excellent and cost-effective solutions to its clientele. Let's meet Tunde Afoladi, the visionary chairman. Amni is one of the um, early uh, indigenous oil companies that were licensed to operate. We got a license in 1993 and uh, we've been operating as a producing and exploring company uh, since then. For us, you know, the vision is to uh, be the uh, company of choice uh, for EMP activities. And our mission is to deliver you know, quality uh, service to our you know, um, shareholders and uh, the clients and also to uh, meet the uh, uh, aspirations of Nigeria and Nigerians. Taking cognizance of the fact that gas is a clean source of power and reliable energy supply, Amni International Petroleum Development Company Limited, a dynamic and enterprising oil and gas operator, has externalized this potential in projects so far executed. We have three times more gas than oil, and we are so blessed and over blessed that a lot of those you know uh, oil reservoirs are associated with gas. We are looking at the urea plant, uh, where Nigeria you know uh, produces fertilizer, and they import fifty percent of the urea they use. Okay. 50%. So ga uh, gas, you know, dry gas is uh, almost 80% urea. Okay. So you bring a plant in and you process the gas and you get urea. See, the, the market is there already, right? We're a small company, all right? So we are looking forward to say, okay, how do I go to zero flare out? And I can make good money doing it. And the Ni Nigeria has to think globally, all right? Of course, we are doing LNG. We are doing a few other, but that is not the only avenue, right? You have methanol, you have urea, you have all kinds of byproducts of gas that you can do where you 
reduce your flare to maybe 5 percent presently structures have been put in place to ensure nigeria increase her oil production to enhance economic growth and development george osaho the director of the department of petroleum resources dpr the regulating body for the oil and gas sector in nigeria gives more insight on this we all know that whether we like it or not we need to have a lot more production everybody has talked about 40 and 4 i don't know if you are familiar with the terminology of 40 and 4. 40 and 4 simply means that the company the country has an aspiration to have 40 billion barrel reserves and 40 million barrel production of oil a day the production i'm talking about uh, in terms of the aspiration of the country with respect to reserves and production capacity is 40 billion barrel reserves and 4 million barrel of oil production per day. And that is what we are looking forward to achieve within the period of time. So we try to focus on those things. So we organize a, a number of fora for operating companies as well as potential operating companies on what they should do, how they should do it, when they should do it. As a determined and focused organization, Anni, as the company is fondly referred to, is poised to add new lease of life to the oil and gas sector, given its wealth of experience in the industry. The thing for small in, in indigenous companies is that we don't have a, a research, you know, R and D, you know, department, you know, which uh, we can really afford. Uh, so the only achievement you can say as a uh, indigenous or producing company is that you keep producing, right? So uh, we've made discoveries, all right? You know, um, we've uh, started with uh, maybe 40 million barrels of oil reserves, and we've grown to over 100 million barrels of oil reserves. You know, so I think that's, uh, um, in fact, maybe way more than 100 million barrels. You know, and we've been able to also, you know, move out of uh, the Nigerian territorial waters to outside of Nigeria to uh, go and. Um, uh, try our hands at uh, you know uh, what we know how to do best. So um, for us, it's just more or less adding uh, more barrels to the reserves, you know, to um, uh, to, to grow. So it is our achievement is just growth that we've been able to grow from a small, you know, uh, five thousand barrel a day company to where we are doing uh, twenty thousand barrels a day right now. In pursuit of true excellence in service. Coupled with its unique kind of activities, its performance has been quite impressive and there is massive acceptance of Amni. Hence, plans have reached advanced stage to explore other shores within West Africa. Foundation is being laid now to see Amni, you know, uh, get to 100, 200,000 barrels of oil a day. Um, we are looking into gas very seriously right now. We have uh, some very rich gas assets and um, we are currently talking right now about doing uh, the first floating LNG in Nigeria. Um, knock on wood, we'll probably be able to bring it to uh, before 2020. Um, and uh, with that, it, it's a real new chapter in the life of the company and LNG uh, gives us uh, a very robust barrel, you know, uh, equivalent that we'll be talking more like uh, producing another maybe 50,000 barrels of all a day equivalent in LNG. Um, so uh, that is really our future, really, you know, but we're also looking at other assets, you know, like I said, we're in Ghana right now. It is instructive to note that the oil and gas sector contributes about 80% to the gross domestic product GDP of the Nigerian economy. And so the Nigerian content policy is a welcome development for improved service delivery. It's, say four years ago that uh, this started, you know, we've still been able to maintain the output of, uh, of, of the country. Unfortunately, though, you know, we have not been able to do much in terms of exploration because when you produce a barrel, you need to find two barrels to replace the barrel that you produce. Otherwise, you'll be better grading. So that probably is the only drawback so far. And I think, you know, um, everybody has tried their best you know, to make it work. And I hope that, you know, this new dispensation will probably make it uh, 
very relevant or very uh, important for us that we do close this gap. Even if their standards are not up to what they are used to, they can go there and infuse some you know uh, level of uh, competency in those companies to bring them up to that world standard and it's happened in several instances you know so i applaud the local content policy it's uh, very very good and uh, yes there may be a little bit of uh, inconvenience to some of us you know small companies uh, but you know uh, what is uh, good for the country should be good for us all right and we are doing our best to uh, support the policy and to make sure that it, 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 it succeeds. Potentials and investment opportunities abound in the Nigerian oil and gas sector. And so, Tunde Afolabi bears his mind on various issues in the operations of the sector. When uh, an industry is as uh, good as the one we are doing right now, all right, uh, the, and I'm talking about the indigenous producers, all right, you can't tell, you know, a bank that its um, uh, exposure to those industries should be limited to X, all right? Uh, why? Nothing we produce stays here, okay? Everything we produce goes out. So it goes out and it brings money back, all right? None of the Nigerian companies that I know of, indigenous, have had any distress factor, they have had any distress issue, or, or, or seen any kind of bankruptcy, you know. We, you know, it's very simple arithmetic, you know. We produce 20 eggs at $5, we sell it at $20, all right? We make $15 profit, we pay the bank. End of story. You know, I don't have to worry the man or woman who's going to buy the egg is standing by my door at the, in the morning every day to come and collect the eggs, all right? The, the barrels that I produce are being spoken for two, three months before they are ready to be, to be sold. Most of the Nigerian banks are very, very good now, okay? They come, they loan you $200 million, they sign the document, they go out there and sell it down, okay? By pleading to you, a central bank, please, consider the local industry that you don't want us to be going back to England, to New York, cap, and, cap, cap in hand. He therefore gives this piece of advice. The last four or five years have been very nice for, for Nigerian indigenous companies because Nigerian banks finally woke up to their to their uh, to their call to charge, right? And you know um, we were able to raise all the monies we needed to operate. I hope that the government will actually set up a committee to look into this issue, right? To say that the oil industry needs to be given a special, you know, uh, uh, dispensation so that, you know, uh, they can, uh, they, they are not put in the same category as housing, as agriculture. As I hope the edition was engaging and informative. That's how much time we permit us today. In case you miss any part of this broadcast, you can visit our website, www.promantraservices.com. You can like us on our Facebook page, Economy Today on NTAI. And to watch our previous episode, visit www.youtube.com forward slash Economy Today on NTAI. Once again, I am Elizabeth Ochemi. From all of us here, we say thank you for watching. See you same time, same station next week.